Good morning. Welcome to worship at Fountain Inn Presbyterian Church. We are glad to have you with us on this Pentecost Sunday. Welcome to those of you sitting in the sanctuary gathered here. Welcome to those of you who are joining us online as well. However you have come to be with us this day, we are glad to have you with us. I'd invite you to find the friendship pads. They are closest to the center aisles. Um, If you would sign those, pass those down, so that you might be able to greet those that you're sitting with following worship today. We extend a special welcome to our visitors. We're particularly glad that you are here. And we would invite you to take one of the blue bags on both tables um, in both narthexes as you leave today, a welcome bag. We are glad to have you with us and um, invite you to reach out if you have any questions about the life and work of our congregation. There are several announcements on the back of your bulletin that I would call your attention to. You'll see there that um, the session has called a congregational meeting for today immediately after worship. It will be the briefest of meetings. Visitors, you are welcome to stay with us. You're welcome to leave if you would like, though, um, during the postlude. But members, we invite you to remain seated, remain in the sanctuary, and we will then have our congregational meeting and then be dismissed for lunch which is today. We will have a congregational youth mission cookout lunch that will be um, immediately afterwards, after worship in the CFC. The Cross Mission Team departs this afternoon. You'll see their, their names listed. We'll commission that group in just a minute. If you have cards for the mission team, if you will put them in the basket right out here underneath the mirror, Um, Shannon will take those for the group. Also today, after worship and during the lunch, you're invited to see Amanda Bell, who will be helping you register for Vacation Bible School if you've not already registered. We're excited to have a good group registering to to join us June 12th through the 15th from 5.30 to 7.30. There's something for all ages. We invite you to register. I also invite you to look at the youth ministry insert where you will find a thank you note about um, the youth mission yard sale and a wonderful note recognizing our three youth who have been commissioned to be a part of Foothills Presbytery Youth Council. Let us now prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of God.
Good morning. Please stand and join me in our call to worship. Wild and free, creative and refreshing, God's Spirit blows through this place. Come, Holy Spirit. Gentle and mysterious, patient and caring, God's Spirit moves in our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Breaking barriers and making connections, healing divisions and making us one, God's Spirit flows between us. Come, Holy Spirit. The promise of Pentecost lies in the, re- in the relentless, or irresistible activity of God, whose Spirit comes among us with power and grace. God refuses to leave us alone, but rather keeps showing up with mercy and love. In confidence, let us confess our sin. Let us pray. God of fire and wind, holy and powerful, mighty and mysterious, We are drawn by your Spirit to this place. As we gather and behold your glory, we become aware of our sin. We have ignored your word. We have rejected your gifts. We have failed in your work, ignoring the truth of Pentecost. We excluded those different from us. We divide our loyalties and we divide our hearts. Let your spirit burn away our sin and fill us with faith and courage so that we might live into the promise of this day and receive the fullness of all that you have prepared for us in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit animates our lives, lifting us into the presence of Christ and sealing our hearts in the promise of his faithful love. This is good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
God's Spirit is among us, making all things new. Let us participate in this new creation by offering our gifts to God. Let us give now of our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Most generous God, you have blessed each of us with gifts to serve and share. May the offerings we present today be used to further your kingdom and build your beloved community. Amen. We are called by God to be the church of Jesus Christ, a sign to the world today for all that God intends for humankind. The call of Christ is to willing, dedicated discipleship. Our discipleship is a manifestation, a showing of the new life that is begun in us at baptism. Discipleship is both a gift and a commitment, an offering and a responsibility. This summer, many of you are responding to God's call by participation in particular mission service and study opportunities by volunteering, serving, and participating in the cross mission trip 
which many of you are leaving this afternoon, Vacation Bible School in just a few weeks, and later in the summer, the Montreat Youth Conference. This morning, we also give thanks and pray for Stuart Garrett, who'll be traveling to Chiapas next Saturday with a group from First Scots in Charleston. And we also give thanks for three of our youth, Madison Reichard, Brianna Buxton, and Merrick Johnson, who were commissioned just two weeks ago for their service on the Foothills Presbytery Youth Council. At this time, I invite anyone and everyone who will be serving in any way in the coming weeks to please stand. I know that's many of you. If you are serving with Vacation Bible School, Cross, the Lord's Table Feed, serving in any way, Mr. Stewart, you're getting ready to serve too. You can stand up as well. Friends, the grace bestowed upon you in your baptism is sufficient for your calling because it's God's grace. By God's grace, we have been saved and enabled to grow in faith and commit our lives to service of Christ. God's called each of you, each of you, to serve this summer in particular ways through the cross mission trip, through vacation Bible school, in Mexico, at Montreat. You're serving on behalf of and representing our congregation. We say thank you. And I now also ask you these questions. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? Will you serve this church and the communities that you are traveling to and those you encounter with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, relying on God's mercy and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit? If so, say I will. Do you promise to accept the people you are called to serve right where they are, just the way they are? If so, say I do. And to the congregation, do you, Fountain Inn Presbyterian Church, confirm the call of our brothers and sisters in the service of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. We do. Will you support and encourage and pray for them? If so, say we will. I now invite us to all join together in prayer using the commissioning prayer found in your bulletin. Let us pray together. Faithful God, in baptism you claimed us, and by your Holy Spirit you are working in our lives, empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading these faithful servants to this time and place. Establish them in your truth, Guide them by your Holy Spirit, that in your service they may grow in faith, in hope, and in love as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, we say thank you, and God bless you in your journeys. You can be seated. I now invite our young friends to come join me right over here for a time together. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. Come on and join us. Good morning. Do you know about birthdays? Yes, you know, but what do you know about birthdays? What do you know? We eat cake. We change our ages. We get and give presents. What about birthdays? How do you celebrate birthdays? Do you have a party sometimes? Do sometimes you have parties? Who's been to a birthday party before? Have you ever have you had a birthday party for you before? Yeah. Yes. Now, what happens at parties? Oh, well, maybe if it was a long time ago, maybe that means it's coming up not too, in the not-too-far future. What do you have at birthday parties? Piñatas, presents, cakes, friends, 
Toys are often in the presence, that's right. Birthday parties are fun, aren't they? Oftentimes, we have decorations at birthday parties. We've got decorations. This church looks a little bit different today, doesn't it? Do you see a, what color do you see a lot of today? Red. Red. Today is Pentecost. And today, some of you are even wearing red. I've got red. I see red lots of places and these flowers. Today, that's right, in his best. This is our worship mouse, and we learn about different days on the church calendar in this book. Today is Pentecost. Do y'all see that word right there? Can you say that word with me? Pentecost. Today is Pentecost, and that is a day we celebrate as the birthday of the church. Can you say happy birthday, church, with me? Let's say it when I count to three. One, two, three. Happy Happy birthday, birthday, church. church. Today is happy birthday, church. Today we have red in the sanctuary. We have red on the communion table. We have red on the pulpit. We've got beautiful flowers. You've got, y'all brought in streamers. We've got, what other symbol do you see today? What, What are there other... Yes, I've got, I've got red on my stole. We've got doves. That's right. Today is Pentecost. Red is the color. That's right. That's right. That's right. There are, there are doves and things in the stained glass windows too. That's exactly right. Today is Pentecost. Today is the birthday of the church. Today is the day we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate the Holy Spirit that helped God's believers spread out and tell God's story to people all over the world. So that's what we call it the birthday of the church. Today, you're going to see red. We talk about fire. And so that's why you see colors of yellow and orange and red and the flowers and the streamers. We're talking about, we sometimes talk about the Holy Spirit as a dove. So today, we see things in the sanctuary that help us celebrate the birthday of the church. They're all things that help us remember to celebrate and to celebrate the Holy Spirit. One of the things we celebrate the Holy Spirit about is wind. Have you ever felt the wind before? Have you been outside and you've maybe felt the wind blowing? At Pentecost, people could feel God's Spirit blowing in the wind. Y'all seen these before? Oh, I'm not, I, that was, that was a bad, but sometimes the pinwheels remind us the wind will blow them. We remember the movement of God's spirit. So today is, what's today? Pentecost. And we remember the Holy Spirit. Say that with me. Holy Holy Spirit. And we remember the birthday of the church. And what color is Pentecost? Red. 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 And we, yes, and orange and yellow. And we remember doves. And we remember fire. And we remember wind. And we do remember Jesus. That's right. Let's say a prayer on this day we celebrate. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your Holy Spirit and for birthdays. Help us share your love. And spread it like the wind all over. All right, y'all can come get a pinwheel. I've got different colors, and you can remember to blow with the Spirit today. Woo, that's all right. It's all right. Here you go. Mary Collins, you want one? You want one? You can pick one. Well, we've got you want an orange or the yellow one? Okay. Do you want one, son? All right, you can go. You want one? You want one? There you go. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. Let's pray together. Open our hearts and minds by the power of your spirit, holy God, that we might hear 
and receive the message you intend for us today. Amen. Our reading for this Pentecost Sunday comes from Acts. It's a familiar Pentecost text. It's chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. Listen now. When the day of of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard from, or each heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit Upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. May God bless the hearing of this God's holy word. Amen. Favorites. Sometimes we say we don't have favorites, but if we're honest, we all have some things that are our favorites. Some of my favorites are time spent with family. My mama's carrot cake, driving through the Montreat Gate, a deserted beach at seven o'clock at night, my mammy's macaroni and cheese, nativities, and Pentecost Sunday. I love celebrating Pentecost. It's one of my absolute favorite Sundays of the whole church calendar. I love when Pentecost rolls around every spring and we bring out the red pyramids. I love this day that we celebrate the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church. I think one of the things that I love most about Pentecost Sunday is that this Sunday engages our senses. I love the visuals that come with this Sunday, with the images of the Holy Spirit and as a dove and tongues of fire and all of the reds. I love thinking about the sounds, the sound of ruach, the Hebrew word for breath and wind and spirit. If Pentecost is anything, it's a sensory event and it's a language event. Every year as Pentecost appears on the church calendar, I always get some questions. So what exactly is this day all about? Why do we say Pentecost is the birthday of the church? What's the deal with all of these languages being spoken? What exactly is Pentecost really about? Well, Pentecost comes 50 days after Easter. Its name comes from the Greek word Pentecostos, which means 50th. After the seven weeks of Eastertide, after the ascension of Jesus into heaven, we celebrate Pentecost. Now, the first Pentecost occurred during one of the great three Jewish festivals. 
The Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, was a joyful festival in which the first fruits of the harvest were presented to God. And it's also the celebration of receiving the law, the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. Now Luke tells us, remember that Acts is a continuation of Luke. Luke tells us that when the day of Pentecost had come, all were gathered together in one place. The all is the entire community of Christians, which at that time was about 120 persons. It was men and women. It was the disciples and other unnamed faithful followers of Jesus. They had all gathered together. And then, there was a sound like a violent rushing wind and tongues of fire appeared on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit showed up and showed out. All of them, all of those gathered together in that place, they all received the Holy Spirit and they were all given the gift of speaking in other languages. Here we see, as we see throughout Acts, the Holy Spirit does not discriminate on who receives and who does not receive the Spirit. All of them were filled. Scripture tells us that there were also devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. That translates into saying there were immigrants Immigrants who had immigrated from areas of the Roman Empire, from the north and the south and the east and the west of Jerusalem. As subjects of Rome, they would have spoken Greek, but they would have also spoken the languages of their native lands. So the source of the crowd's bewilderment is that they now hear their native languages being spoken They are hearing and understanding these Galileans, these hicks from Galilee, as they were called, speaking in their languages, in their native tongues. They're amazed and perplexed, trying to figure out what has happened to cause the fact that they are now hearing their immigrant languages being spoken, telling all about the glories of God not in the language of the empire, but in the languages of those subject to the empire. They're confused and they wonder aloud, are these people drunk? What has come over them? They cannot understand. And that's when Peter stands up to preach and he recalls the words of the prophet Joel, declaring that this is the day that the prophet spoke of when he said, God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men and your young women shall see visions and your old men and your old women will dream dreams. Pentecost gives power to the band of Jesus's followers to speak languages of the world so that they might tell the gospel in every language. The gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost enables these early believers to birth the church so that the church might bear witness to the ends of the earth in the languages of the people of the world. It's a birthday story like no other. What the crowds on that first Pentecost found so baffling was that God would stoop down and speak to them in their mother tongue. That God would welcome them so intimately with words and expressions hearkening back to their birthplaces, their childhoods, their beloved cities and countries of origin. It was as if to say, this spirit-drenched place, this fledgling church, this new body of Christ is yours. You don't have to feel like outsiders here. We speak your language too. Come in, come in and feel at home. But I dare say that we don't always feel fluent 
in the languages of other people. We're still broken people living in a broken world, but the very brokenness of our language is the mother tongue for others who will listen to us. I bet we've all heard of broken English, right? Broken English. A North Carolina judge tells of a story of a Vietnamese woman who was waiting her turn to be examined in a crowded hospital emergency room. She gradually became aware of a frustrating non-conversation being attempted a few seats down. A nurse was trying to ask a new patient for some details about her illness. The patient spoke Spanish. The nurse did not. The Vietnamese woman listened for a minute, and then she realized that while she didn't speak Spanish, she did understand the broken English bits and phrases that the Spanish-speaking woman offered as answers. Because of her own experience of learning to communicate in broken English, the Vietnamese woman could understand the gist of what this other woman was trying to say. So the Vietnamese woman offered to translate the broken English of the Spanish speaker into something that the nurse could understand. She was so successful in bridging the brokenness of their languages that eventually the Vietnamese woman was hired by the hospital as a kind of generic translator. Because brokenness was, is, the common language spoken by all hospital patients. Pentecost is a miraculous language event, a miracle of communication, all about God's love and wisdom and power, enabling God's diverse creation to hear God's good news for themselves. It's the day we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church, the birthday of the reign of God on earth, recognizing that everywhere the Spirit of God is at work. It's the high, happy, holy day when the church was birthed so that all might come to know of God's deeds of power, regardless of their place. My prayer for us on this Pentecost Sunday is that we continue to pray, come Holy Spirit, come. On this day, when we talk about language and the gift of the Spirit so that all might come to know and understand God's deeds of power, I hope that we really think about language, about how we use our words or don't use our words and remain silent. My prayer is that we find a way to use language so that we, the church, might speak and translate the good news of God's deeds of power. Even when we aren't speaking the same language, may we find ways to understand one another and find solutions to all that plague our world right now. My prayer is that we find words to speak love, to speak justice, to speak, to speak peace, to follow the way of Jesus and speak his countercultural messages of hope and mercy to the world. Pentecost is the day we celebrate Christ's promise fulfilled, that while he has ascended to heaven, we are not alone. The Holy Spirit is with us and fills us, fills us with love and language, fills us with dreams to dream and visions to see. The Holy Spirit fills all of us, men and women, young and old, all of us from north and south and east and west. Our prayer is that this is what we remember when we think of this happy holy day of red and wind and fire and spirit. For this is what Pentecost is all about. Amen. I've just admitted that I have favorites. And my absolute favorite creed faith statement that we find in our denomination's book of confessions is a brief statement of faith. This faith statement, which was written after the reunion of the Northern and Southern Presbyterian churches. 
I invite you to stand now as we use a portion of a brief statement of faith to affirm our faith. This is the portion that speaks of the Holy Spirit. It is full of rich, faithful language. So I hope we pay attention to what it is we say together. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus.
may be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Scripture says they will come from north and south and east and west to sit at table together in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. It's not my table. It's not your table. It's the table of our risen Lord. And it is he who sets this feast before us. He invites all who trust and believe in him and want to know him to come and sit together and enjoy the feast that he has prepared for each of us. So let us come. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God. Your Spirit hovered over the waters and brought forth all creation. You breathed into us the breath of life, and set us on the earth to praise and serve you. When we lost our way, you called us back, then sent your own Son to save us. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing the glory of your name. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior and Lord. By your Spirit, you named him beloved and empowered him to serve the poor, proclaim freedom from sin's bondage, and befriended the friendless and the outcast. When he breathed his last upon a cross, you raised him from the tomb, breaking the power of death and opening the way to life eternal. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. Unite us with Christ and with all who trust in him, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Set our hearts aflame with a love for the truth and a desire to do your will. Make our witness to Christ burn brightly and keep us faithful until Christ comes again in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your kingdom. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forever. And now we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the night of his arrest, our Lord was at table with his friends his disciples, and he took bread, and after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he said, friends, this is my body, broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, in the same way, he took the cup, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, Shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink, all of you, of it, and remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, this morning, you will be invited to come forward by way of the center aisle to one of two stations 
you will receive a piece of bread and then you will take a cup of juice from the server. And then you're invited to return to your seats by way of the outside aisle. If you would like to remain seated, you're welcome to do so. And we will then serve you at your seat. And then we will serve the choir as well. Friends, these are the gifts of God. Let us enjoy and partake in this feast. bread of life, the bread of life, the bread of life, the bread of life, there you go, Cindy, the bread of life, Miss Louise, the bread of life, 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 Angela, the bread of life, Tracy, the bread of life, Stuart, the bread of life. Let's pray together. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit 
that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, as we eat, help us to remember your provision and goodness. May this mealtime be more than food to us, a time to share with others, a time to remember those who hunger, a time to dwell upon your sacrifice. As we eat, help us to remember your provision and goodness with thankful hearts. Amen. Friends, on this day of Pentecost, on this day of red and wind and fire and dove and spirit, go forth, go forth into the world in peace. Have courage, hold on to what is good, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and honor all God's people. Go now with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen. Oh.